Hey everyone, I'm Joe, back with a new episode of Getting to Know Toolbag 3. In this video, I'll focus on the global illumination system. First off, go to Render Properties and enable GI. The GI system has two main components. The first component is Diffuse, which provides occlusion and bounce lighting. The second component is Specular, which renders accurate reflections. The GI system is completely real-time. There's no need to bake light maps, pre-compute lighting, or anything like that. One of the really cool things you can do with the GI system is use objects as light sources. So let's crank up the emissive on this green wall. Now I can adjust the color of the red wall for a similar effect. You can see how quick and easy it is to achieve some really interesting lighting with very simple geometry and materials. Local reflections can be used as well to add additional sharpness to the reflections in the areas where the GI system may be a little chunky. Local reflections will look a little noisy in the viewport, but when you render an image, they'll look a lot better. You can go to the capture settings and increase the sampling to 100x or 400x for even better render quality. With more complex scenes, like larger environments, there's some other things to keep in mind. First off, global illumination is somewhat expensive to render. If you have a lower end video card, you may want to set the resolution to half to boost performance. This setting only affects the viewport. It doesn't have any effect on the final render. To calculate the lighting, the GI system creates a simplified version of your scene, which you can see if you enable show voxels. The contents of the scene are mapped to a voxel volume. If we want to focus on a specific element, we can remap the voxels by adjusting the voxel scene fit setting. Once I tweak this value, you'll notice that the voxel volume no longer encompasses the scene, and I miss out on the far point that I'm trying to accentuate here. We can fix that by going to the camera settings and adjusting the orbit distance. This will move the center point of the voxel volume further ahead. Now I just need to make sure that all of the on-screen elements fit within the voxel volume, so I'll increase the voxel scene value. By adjusting these settings, you may be able to shift a significant portion of the voxel resolution to the point of interest in your scene. This isn't something you'll always need to do, but it's nice to have the flexibility when you need it. That does it for this episode of Getting to Know Toolbag 3. Be sure to check out our website for more tutorials, art features, and other great stuff.